Hello, I'm Graham Jones, an accredited lecturer for the Art Society and also a former Senior Director of Music of the Household Division, where I was responsible for the delivery of all state ceremonial music on behalf of the British Army, the nation and indeed the monarch. Now you may be asking, why is a former Senior Director of Music of the Household Division lecturing on the music of the Caribbean? Well, once you realise that the Caribbean islands, some of them were British colonies, and that those British colonies uh, had armies, and the armies were built on a British model, that's Jamaica, Barbados and Bermuda. And each of those regiments and those armies had military bands. And they trained their musicians and their directors of music at the Royal Military School of Music at Nella Hall, just outside of London. Whilst I was there studying to be a director of music, I also had some colleagues from the Caribbean who were also there studying. And we had the opportunity to discuss each other's cultures, each other's music, and learn from one another. I really enjoyed learning about the Caribbean culture and its music. So I decided to do a little bit more research. So here we have it, and I'm not going to play the trombone that's in the picture. So please sit back and enjoy my lecture, The Music of the Caribbean. <laughs> In 1492, Columbus lands in what is now the Bahamas. Though Italian, his expeditions were sponsored by the Catholic monarchs of Spain. On landing, he claims what he thought was the West Indies for Spain. However, he landed in what is now, as we know it, the Americas, the Caribbean. Both Portuguese and Spanish ships began claiming territories in Central and Southern Africa. These colonies brought in gold and very quickly other European powers, mostly especially England, the Netherlands and France, hoped to establish profitable colonies of their own. Imperial rivalries made the Caribbean a contested area during European wars for centuries to come. The development of agriculture in the Caribbean required a large workforce of manual labourers which the Europeans found by taking advantage of the slave trade in Africa. The Atlantic slave trade brought African slaves to British, Dutch, French, Portuguese and Spanish colonies in the Americas, including the Caribbean. Slaves were brought to the Caribbean from the early 16th century until the end of the 19th century. The majority of slaves were brought into the Caribbean colonies between 1701 and 1810. They also brought with them their musical traditions. Would you believe at the height of slavery in the Caribbean, there were around 5 million slaves in the Caribbean, of which over 2.5 million slaves uh, were in the British colonies. The fusion of colonial and African music and dance created a unique style in the Caribbean. The coupling of the music of different regions of West Africa and the influencing of different European countries, India and indigenous music, has resulted in many unique styles and traditions of music across the whole of the Caribbean. This island-specific culture also forms the music of the Caribbean. Every island has its distinct musical styles all inspired to one degree or another by the music brought over from West Africa. This, combined with the musical influences of the various colonial powers, created a melting pot, a fusion, if you wish, of musical genres. As such, most Caribbean music, however unique to its own island culture, includes elements of African and colonial music. Heavy use of percussion instruments, complex rhythmic patterns and call and response vocals. That said, it's important to recognise the musical styles unique to each island. In many cases, the difference between one style and another comes down to the rhythms utilised in each country's music. There is also a different rhythm for every single island. 
Let's take a look at some of the traditional music found on different islands, starting with Dominica and its unique Jinping band, which supports local traditional dance groups. Uh, drums were banned until emancipation by the Barbados Slave Code Act of 1675 because plantation owners saw them as a symbol of power which could incite unrest and even riots. It wasn't until after emancipation that Jinping bands really came into their own. These Jinping bands uh, have four players. Firstly, we have the taboo or drum, which it forms the heartbeat of the band, which was brought to Dominica by the French settlers who came from the Basque region of France. The taboo is sometimes known on Dominica as taboo Basque. The player plays rhythms with his hands on both sides of the taboo. It's quite interesting to see how he does that. Next we have the boom boom, which is the base or lower end of the band, made out of forest tree or lengths of bamboo. However, it's nothing like the sound of a didgeridoo. Different pitches can be produced by blowing into the playing end of the instrument and it's really a sort of syncopated bass pulse, a relentless bass pulse. The gouache or scraper comes from Native American roots and provides the treble or high end of the Jinping band. It's enclosed tin cylinder with beads or small pebbles inside which can be shaped. The gouache is played with a scraper made with three metal wires attached to a wooden handle. Basically, the player scrapes and shakes at the same time the guage to create its unique, incredible sound. Finally, we have the accordion, which originated in Austria, Germany and Italy and came to Dominica via France. The accordion is the only instrument which provides both the melody and harmonic structure of the Jinping band. Additionally, the musicians use their feet to tap out sort of beats, bass beats, similar to today's kick drum that you could find in a pop band. Put it all together and it's quite a unique sound. Jinping bands generally accompany traditional dances of Dominica, which is heavily influenced by 19th century French dance, such as the quadrille, waltz, and le lances, to name but a few. The French brought European dancers to the islands so that they could have some sophisticated evenings. These would have been danced in the plantation owners' homes, where slaves would have seen these dances performed. Notice how gentle the dance is. Musically, the dance is divided into two eight bar repeated patterns with two groups of four dancers. Wasn't that such a gorgeous, delicate dance? And a big thank you as well to the, uh, the Quadrille Club for providing that footage for us. Now let's take a look at the Quadrille as danced today in Dominica. Notice the music pattern is now a repetitive four bar sequence which becomes nearly hypnotic especially with the syncopated pulse of the boom boom. Also the quadrille has now taken on a much more relaxed Caribbean style. However at the end of the day it's still very much a quadrille. I'm sure you'll agree, it's quite amazing to see how the fusion of cultures, 
has created this wonderful adaptation of the European quadril into uh, the D Dominican quadril that you've just witnessed. Now, Quelby is the native music of the US Virgin Islands, a sort of early calypso and also the official music of the Virgin Islands. The song of Quelby music are oral history which immortalises significant events, spreads gossip and recounts the day-to-day -day life on the island. developed when the Virgin Islands were a Danish colony. The African slaves in the plantations were not at all allowed to play their own indigenous instruments so they developed a most unique style of singing and response, telling stories from their homeland and life on the plantation. Some very political and risky songs were sung with lots of double meanings. The language used was Creole, which developed by mixing languages together, in this case, French and African. The most famous Quelby singer today is Jamesy, who made his own banjo from a Danish cheese tin and cut and carved the peg head and fingerboard. I would not recommend doing that at home. Here he is playing his wonderful homemade banjo, Jamesy. The music of Quelby is played by a scratch band, which, con which consists of uh, a steel, which is a triangle, a flute, a drum, kind of bongos, a squash, which is scraped. Today's instruments can also be added to, like a bass guitar, a rhythm guitar, sometimes even, dare I say, a saxophone. When James was asked about this development, he simply said, hey man, the music's traveling. But the most important thing are the stories the words tell in Quelby music. Here is an excellent example. take you to Barbados for a completely different form of music making which is known as landship which traces back to the 1860s when Moses Wood a Barbadian who served in the Royal Navy returned from living in Cardiff and Southampton and he was influenced by the friendly societies he'd seen in the UK he decided to form a society in Barbados built around the discipline and comradeship of the Royal Navy. The landship functions like a working class friendly society, however, with the added bonus of choreographed music and dance. The friendly society provides the members with cash, insurance for illness, maternity, and even death. As its name suggests, it pretends to be a naval ship on land, mimicking the Royal Navy which could be found anchored in the ports of Barbados. The house where the meetings take place is known as the dock, with sails and insignia flying from the roof. Its members form a ship's crew 
and a full rank structure and dressing in naval style uniforms is the order of the day. Women came into the movement in the early 1900s designated as nurses. Each landship was named after British ships such as the Iron Duke, Nelson and Cornwall. The movement expanded in the 1920s until there were three fleets of over 60 ships. By the 1930s, that's about 3,000 men and 800 women. For theatre, the crew forms two lines and moves together, directed by the captain of the ship performing a series of repeated movements. A ship can't sail without an engine which is the rhythm and music known in landship as a tuk band, made up of a bass drum, a snare drum, a flute. Here is Ilf Wilkinson talking about tuk drumming. The basic fundamentals of playing is, and the kettle is with two sticks. We have a gentleman here that we can actually have a look at that briefly. And if you're looking at the six, the feel of six are notes that are played equally with each hand and then you identify a louder or softer note in order to help you also connect with the rhythm. So a good way of doing that is basically um, we're going to start with the basis that I've showed you which is the two simple notes for the six and it's played right in the center of the drum. So this is a what you get out of the six. If you look at it as a raw two sticks hitting the drum, this is what it looks like. Any variations you make from here help you to identify the rhythm as a unit. But that's basically having a, a, a listen to the six without using the drum as Barbadians do, because I, I want to stress this very carefully, that whilst these drums are played across the world, including the Caribbean, the only persons that play these drums this way are Barbadians, hence the name Tukban from a Bajanian point of view, a Bajana point of view, however you want to put it. It's a local traditional thing that we have now developed and it's based upon these simple things. Now going to what we call the chime, so you get a difference in sound. All that's being done here is to move the stick from one location to another. It changes the tone, it gives you that unique Barbadian sound you'll find the elderly guys or the more traditional guys will tell you you are playing the kettle and you are playing the chime. The chime would turn out to be the ending of the drum. If you stop playing the chime, you are actually playing the same thing over and over. What identifies the differences in song is the moving of the stick from one point to the other. So you can see how incredible uh, the drumming technique is um, in the tuk band. But also uh, unique is the flute. And the flute is called the Clark flute, uh, it's English and it's made by metal. However, people started to make their own uh, flutes within uh, Barbados, uh, which are absolutely wonderful. Uh, so sit back and enjoy um, somebody from the Tug band. Down by the cool riverside, some of them turned to the boatman and fair, oh, oh. May over the side, oh may over the side, boatman, oh may over the side. Someone out there just is waiting for me, so oh may over the side. Now in order for this land ship to move from its dock, it needs a couple of things. It needs a head of steam. And the head of steam, of course, is provided by the engine, which is the tuck band. It also needs the crew to be there to steer the ship. The quicker the music, the more head of steam there is, and 
the steadier the ship is in rough waters. Here's a really good description of how this works. In, in the waltz, you would get the, the, the song Adam and Eve, which, which is the real authentic traditional right. waltz song. Banana, da, da, da. Right, correct. And then as, 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 as Punko would say, you, you know, you, you build up to, you're building up to full right. steam, you get medium steam or the, or the fast, you know, you, you get a, another traditional song, we call it the, uh, the Caledonian, Caledonian, you know. Right. 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 right, so that is one of the traditional songs. And then with the, with the fast talk now, you, you, we have one or two songs. We have a song, you know, Burn, 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 Burn Cain, like. Burn Cain, yeah. then we have Granum Grong. These are real traditional songs. Yeah. And your favorite song that, that is, uh, that is Suki. That's my favorite. I'm recently now took by rhythm. Right, right, okay, right. It was very, that was a real traditional top band song. So, yes, there are, there are a couple of traditional songs that we still, you know, incorporate in what we do. I mean, I play a lot of like, well, familiar songs of, of the present time, you know, waltz, classy, whatever, and top band. Still make sure, you know, to keep the tradition as part of it. We can see the incredible effect slavery, colonialism, emancipation and independence has shaped the rich culture of music and dance in the Caribbean. And it's still evolving as some of the older, more traditional music dies away, new music that still draws on the rich history, heritage and tradition come into being. The population is ever changing with Chinese and Indians settling in the Caribbean, bringing their music and culture to the rich melting pot that is the music of the Caribbean. I'm going to take you right back to the beginning of my lecture, where I talked about the military bands that can be found in the Caribbean. So I thought I would leave you with the Jamaican Defence Force Band wearing their traditional uniform, which was given to both the Jamaican and Barbados Defence Forces by Her Majesty Queen Victoria. Today, it's only the bands that wear this wonderful uniform. So, playing the most British of party tunes, Post on Gallop, which, by the way, is still played today in every officer's and sergeant's mess across the British Armed Forces. So, here they are. It is the Jamaican Defence Force Band. Thank you for watching.